These are super scarce, and they're from the very first comic artist in history. He created the comic strip. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to look at some items that we just found and they're tied to the very first comic artist in history. This person created the comic strip. He also created the first comic strip character and he also was the first to market something tied to a comic. Now this is the Yellow Kid and this is by the very first comic artist which was R.F. Outcult. He created the Yellow Kid as well as a very well-known character, Buster Brown. Now, these are some trading cards that were created in 1896 for the Thomas Adams Chewing Gum Company. Now, Thomas Adams actually created chewing gum. So without Thomas Adams and Outcult, you wouldn't find chewing gum and cards together like this. Now, these were issued singly when you bought a piece of gum. So technically, these are the first trading style cards that you got when you bought gum. They may not have been sealed in a package like the 1930 Gaudis cards, but they would be considered, in my book, the very first trading card, gum card collectible that was out there. And again, it's from the very first comic strip out there, comic artist as well. So they're very unique, very rare. Now there's two different versions of these. They both carry the same cataloging number, but one version has real small numbers like this. There's a set of 25 of these. On average, a complete set of all 25 cards from the set will sell between $1,200 and $3,000 depending on the condition. Now, as these being the first set, there is nothing on the backs of these. These are excellent condition cards. These should sell around 40 to 50 bucks because of the condition, each card. Very nice, very unique. It's something that doesn't show up. These are honestly the first ones of these I have ever turned up. We're going to look at some history tied to these. Most people are completely unaware of who Outcult is, but he's a very phenomenal character, as is Thomas Adams. Richard F. Outcult was the creator of the very first comic strip. Without him, comic books may not be around today. He is the founding father. The Yellow Kid by Outcult was the very first cartoon comic character to actually have merchandise mass produced. It was his characters that started the mass production craze of advertising comic related characters. Now this is the comic Lapedia and this goes in history of a large number of the founders as well as those very well known in the comic industry. Now, the Yellow Kid himself came from an earlier incarnation of Outcult's comic strip called Hogan's Alley. And this is where the Yellow Kid came from. The character himself was a delinquent in the Bowery area, the slums of New York City. So it was a little kind of a touchy subject at that time. Now, most people would know him by the Yellow Kid, but he actually had a full-fledged name and he was called Mickey Dugan. It just never caught on and the yellow kids stuck with it. Here is a fine example of one of the comic strips and this is a half pager from the later run of the actual strip itself. Touched on many different subjects. Back in those days there was no law to stop a child from smoking so they did touch on many of the touchy subjects, the news of the day. And this was the very first comic strip, comic book like artwork you will find out there. Here's yet another one talking about one of the newest crazes out there, which was the phonograph. Now, if you look at this, this is actually an Edison cylinder record player. That's the type of records that were out at this time. It's a round tube similar in size to the size of a toilet paper tube, but it actually had wax on the outside and it would play music. Now, during Outcult's time, there was also some legal arguments over who owned the rights to the Yellow Kid as well as Buster Brown. When he moved from one newspaper publication to another and tried to take his character with him, the newspaper who originally published it did retain the ability to still publish his own comic strips without his permission. Same thing basically happened with Buster Brown. Now, in the end, the Yellow Kids did not last too long because of the mass production of advertising paraphernalia, such as the trading cards that I showed you. 
Now, Hearst's newspaper was the very first one to publish Outcult's cartoon. All the competitors actually labeled Hearst's newspaper yellow journalism based specifically on the yellow kid. That term is still used today, which surprises many people that it actually came from Outcult's the yellow kid. That is the founding of the term yellow journalism. Now, in regards to the trading cards I showed you earlier in this video, they were created by Thomas Adams to be distributed whenever you bought a piece of his chewing gum. Now, interesting enough, Thomas Adams created chewing gum. He was the founder of chewing gum. Now, interesting enough, Thomas Adams was a personal friend of Santa Ana. He actually worked for him, the president of Mexico during the Alamo. Very interesting figure in history. Without Thomas Adams, these cards wouldn't exist either because they were created for the sole purpose as a giveaway to those who bought his one cent bubble gum balls very well known he actually created the very first machines to mass produce his bubble gum as well he is the father of the chewing gum industry and he also produced the very first promotional advertising cards that came with a stick of gum now they weren't packaged together you would actually be given a card when you bought a piece of his gum for a penny now it would take more than 30 years for chewing gum and trading cards to be packed together in the 1930s, Fleer and the Gotti Company actually created packed trading cards with a stick of gum. But Adams Chewing Gum by Thomas Adams actually predates this. You would actually get a trading card with gum as well. It is truthfully, in my mind, the very first trading card to be issued with gum. Now, complete sets are extremely scarce, especially in nice condition. The estimates for this auction that have ended were two to $5,000. They seldom show up these days at all, especially a complete set. Not only did they release the trading cards, but they created every type of imaginable advertising character, artwork, toys, games that they could think of. This is a site right here, which I'll have a link to down in the description box, that just shows you a broad range of items that were manufactured for the Yellow Kid. Most of these collectibles can sell for hundreds, if not thousands of dollars, like this puzzle here. Most of them do not show up very often at all. This puzzle is from the same time, 1896. It's a wooden style puzzle with printed artwork, as you can see here. A vast array of other kids' toys and collectibles were created throughout the time. The Yellow Kid is actually one of the first dolls, action figure style of characters ever created. Not just dolls, but statuary, games, pinups, paper, items of all sorts, glass bottles, jars, food containers, you name it, they created it for the Yellow Kid. Like this very interesting item here showing the Yellow Kid with a cigarette coming out of his mouth. Other interesting items you can find are books, sheet music, advertising cards, postcards, as we showed you, trading cards, greeting cards. It runs the gambit, including candy containers as well. Now, here's a very nice display of Yellow Kid items, including the shooting gallery in the back, a metal figure, another doll, which looks to be a ventriloquist doll. The Yellow Kid items were still sold all the way into the 1930s. And yet another nice assortment here. Food packaging you can find as well for the Yellow Kid. Any type of advertisement that you could think of was released with his figure, his character on it. Now the trading cards I showed you are from the Yellow Kid chewing gum line. Not only did they have chewing gum, but they also had the Yellow Kid cigars. And here is a cigar cutter that you would have found at a tobacco shop back in the day. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends.
friend and ear will be glad to explain how the zip code eases your postal pain. The first digit tells in which part of the nation your letter will find its destination. Since the country's divided into ten big sections, each with a number to establish direct, your letter has even departed. We've already got it started. The next two digits go hand in hand to a major post office over land. Since each big section has town after town, we need these numbers to really narrow things down. We've got the section, we've got the city. Just two, two more numbers, numbers and we're sitting pretty. pretty. These last two digits are really specific. They're your local post office number. Terrific! What a system. As you can plainly see, just five little numbers. Quick as can be. But if you have a question or you have a doubt, if you're still not sure what the whole thing's about, just always remember, zip code defined means city to city in one straight line.